9,700, 40 pound budget, big fifth wheel here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. This is a uh, rear kitchen with a full bed slide Cedar Creek. Just came in, it was part kept. We actually picked it up for the folks and delivered their new RV to them. I'm not joking when I say we do everything here. Um, structurally, it's held up very well, despite a, a lot of years of use and hard weather exposure. Don't get me wrong though, this is a budget piece. This is not the prettiest girl at the ball. I'm not going to make promises for it. I'm not going to make excuses for it. I'm going to let you know exactly what it is, what it's not, and if it works, great. And if it doesn't, no sweat. Totally respect it either way. I don't really know how the folks may have had the furniture arranged on this thing. Uh, again, part kept quite a long time there. But there's more furniture in this thing than there's space for. Like you can see, this is the original hide-to-bed sofa. Um, I think two of those chairs with the padded backs are probably the original chairs. But the, I don't know if that's the original table. And the two chairs with the black uh, rounded backs here, the, the peg backs, there's two more of those. So they bought some chairs at some point. Plus there's a chair here. Plus there's another chair here. So this thing has more furniture than it was ever intended to have. I don't know if maybe they left the table in the middle of the floor or what they did. It doesn't matter. The fact is it's all here. If you purchase the camper and you don't like it, you are welcome to rearrange it, throw stuff away, add, subtract, divide, delete, multiply, I don't care. Do whatever you want with it. My job is I'm going to try to tell you what it is, what it isn't. What it isn't is perfect and pretty. What it also isn't is dead. I've seen much worse. I've seen much, much worse. It's a budget piece. It's not a handyman special. There is a difference. A budget piece is rough around the edges, but altogether she holds together just fine. A uh, handyman special is something that needs a lot of work. This, right now, doesn't appear to need a lot of work. That being said, guys, I have not had this pulled up to the building. We have not yet had the opportunity to go through and fully systems check this thing. And usually on a budget piece like this, we typically won't. But what we can do for you, uh, because I wouldn't expect you to spend this kind of money uh, hoping that something works. I'm, I'm not that delusional. Um, the uh, What I would recommend here is if you look at this and you say, you know what, overall I agree, I, I've seen worse, but um, it's going to work for us and we're just going to leave it parked somewhere, that'd be fine, then give our sales team a call, schedule an appointment, come see it in person, and if it still looks all right, we'll get it pulled up to the building where we can hook it up to water, electric, uh, throw a propane tank on it if it needs it, whatever it needs, so you can see exactly the kind of condition working order it's in currently. There's a couple things I see where somebody spent a little money on this too. So, the, you know, it, it's not like it was just abandoned and neglected necessarily. Like, there's bigger Max Air fans in here. And that's uh, the little raindrop indicator on there that says this is probably like a rain sensor one, which is a nicer upgrade. And you can see plenty of, you know, cabinet space. That's one of the best parts about a rear kitchen. And overall, here's something I've learned. These classic rear kitchens. There's two areas you, you look immediately to try to find a leak. And that is this whole rear corner and that whole rear corner. And I can't find where there's been a leak. It doesn't mean there hasn't been and it hasn't been professionally repaired. My point is, it doesn't look like it's actively leaking, nor do I really see. I don't believe it ever has. And that's very uncommon with these big rear kitchens back here. But I think the difference here is the structure of a Cedar Creek compared to the structure of a lot of RVs that were built at the time. And we'll talk more about that as we go outside because this thing is built like a freaking tank. Um, again, you're probably not going to leave chairs blocking the door. I put them there just so that I could walk through the RV unimpeded. They were just kind of stacked up on this hide-a-bed sofa over here. You do whatever you want with it. That, oh, that's that classic old hide-a-bed with the recliner legs. If I wish they would bring that back today. I... I except just minus the inner spring. If they could find a way to make that a memory foam trifold with the kickout legs, man, that would be the ticket right there. Um, pleated shades, day and nights throughout. You can see this was made, obviously, back in the, what, 2000, 2001 era, where, before we had flat screens all over the place. Residential fan letting through some air. Central air, central heat. Again, in theory, actively working. 
Um, I haven't, again, personally tested it. I will always try to shoot folks straight. This is a classic middle bathroom deck. You really don't see a lot of the style of construction anymore. Um, what it gives us, though, is that extra headroom here in the shower for a tall person like me. And this has a garden tub complete with a little corner seat, which is nice if you need to sit to bathe. Now, what's also nice here is you've got a lot of floor space in this bathroom. You also have a sliding privacy door here to uh, kind of enclose things. Now, what's cool is you can uh, just quickly use the bathroom right here. It looks like they put a little riser on the toilet so it sits a little higher. But you can, uh, and it's, tell you what, that's quite spacious. Usually a more closet-styled bathroom is uh, like a coffin. That doesn't feel to be the case here. Max Air Vent fan up top. Uh, nice linen cabinet space built right in the bathroom too. So you've got the sliding privacy door here, but you can use the bathroom here without blocking access to the master bathroom or bedroom. Now, take a look at this. Not only do you have that big front wardrobe closet, but holy crap, you've got a whole additional closet here, complete with a laundry hamper and triple dresser drawers. And that's not all bad. Now, like a classic fifth wheel with a bedroom, we do step up a little bit into the bedroom. 70 by 80 queen bed space right here. I do like that uh, headboard window for extra breeze and whatnot. Now, bathroom, living room, bedroom. Again, they added the bigger, nicer fans, and it does look like there's some roof covers on some of those. I looked up in that corner. I looked up in that corner. Again, I don't see leaks. Um, it does look like the ceiling panel might have dipped a little right here, but if I walk up here, it's all solid. There's no, like, water. There's no sponging. There's no swelling. There's no nothing. I don't believe there's water in here. I found some dead ladybug carcasses. <laughs> but the good news is, Mr. Dirt Devil loves those things. He chews them right up and eats them for breakfast, literally. Um, and a classic little vanity station. Although, in today's world, this could be a nice little computer station right here for somebody. Might be a little fun. Okay, so the decals. Not pretty. They're peeled. They're faded. But... Again, you're not buying this thing because it's the prettiest thing at the ball. You're buying it because it's inexpensive and it doesn't look like it really has any major problems that uh, a simple, you know, like sponge bath wouldn't fix. It needs a bath. That's, that's not terrible. Um, the awning here, at some point they put, uh, it looks like all new awning hardware on it. I don't know how long ago that happened. At the very least, they put a new awning too because you have to, uh, you can't just add that shield, that, that wrap around the awning fabric without fully replacing the tube. It's actually interesting the way the hardware works on that. Now, um, if you look up top here, eagle-eyed viewers are gonna go, whoa, I'm not dumb. There's a big tear in the ceiling liner up there. And the answer is no, there's not. When we get up on the roof, you will see that they didn't just wash and condition the roof. They actually just slathered on just a heaping helping of uh, roof sealant material. Um, they just they just smeared the stuff on like mayonnaise on sheet music, man. They were heavy-handed with it. Well, what you're looking at up there, because you see the same thing over here, is it's actually um, like over-application where they used a little more of that stuff than they had to. They kind of bled over the sides a little bit, sort of like when you use too much paint and it bleeds down a wall. And then it, uh, it kind of dried and curled on the edge of that a little bit. So it's not the roof. It's not a leak. It's the roof uh, coating that went on there. So that's what that is, because that's the, that looks real scary. I got up on a ladder and looked at that and went, oh, hold on here, partner. And it's a, it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. And again, kind of like they added money on Max Air fans, they added money on slide toppers here. And I am sorry if it's windy. It is like we just, we're, we're expecting a storm front to roll through, which is why I'm flying through this. We do have an enclosed heated underbelly here. Now, interestingly, like you see the wiper seals on the slides. That is actually something Cedar Creek pioneered. The slide uh, wipe seal systems that you find across the almost entire RV business now, these guys were the pioneers for it. Cedar Creek actually were the pioneers of a lot of things. Now, I mentioned a couple times how this thing's built like a rock. If you walk up to it, um, let me get around the other side here, actually. It'll be an easier place to see it. If you walk up to it and you just start pounding on it, feels nice and solid. You're like, yeah, it's a normal laminated RV, right? The answer is no. This is not laminated. It actually, the, the structure on these is nuts. And it, it, some people would argue overbuilt, but when you see something like this that's near 20 years old, 
and hasn't always been the best kept thing out there and by and large it's really still held together pretty well then you see why they built it the way they built it so cedar creeks are still built today the way they're built here they're just prettier today they've got aluminum wall studs every 16 inches on center just like a stick built trailer except they use aluminum studs and they're not laminated they are screwed and bracketed in place and then there's like this insane curing cement type stuff that they use to hold everything together now that stuff continues to cure over time so the actual physical wall structure of this is literally stronger now than when it was built and sold brand new that's what's really kind of crazy about these guys they're sort of like a bottle of wine the label might get sun faded and the label might not look great but the wine inside gets better and better that's kind of the interesting thing about these now they're fiberglass skin it's like an extremely thick skin and uh it's kind of uh well, there's a process it's kind of called like mindy boarding i think is one of the names for it but basically the fiberglass skin is glued to a uh, double layered um offset substrate so you basically have a 3 8 thick suit of armor all the way around this thing on top of the aluminum uh structure and then they uh, have uh, you know your regular insulation packed all the way through that thing between the studs so it's a very different style of construction you again you pretty much don't see this almost anywhere else in the business but that's this is actually how classic big fifth wheels were always built and cedar creek is the only one that maintained that build structure even in today's market so that's the reason this <laughs> old beat up black eyed girl sitting on the bar stool at the end of the bar still has a couple rounds left in her you know she's seen she's seen some things she's been ex you know exposed to some weather but by and large she ain't dead so it's a it's a budget piece but it's not a handyman special there is a difference i think that's really the message to take away here so with that take care stay safe have fun happy camping everyone as windy as can be so I apologize for that holy cow um, I'm actually standing on top of a neighboring trailer I'm trying not to fall off so hopefully you appreciate this footage looks like these are holy cow whoa wind holy cow um, these folks uh, look like they use the roof coating so and they were pretty liberal with the stuff you can see that they just were willing to paint it on and slide it around all over the place good news it has kept the membrane probably pretty protected. The bad news is it's not really pretty on the roof. The good news is nobody really looks at the roof anyway except for weird guys like me. So hopefully that helps you understand if this is the right or the wrong one for you. If that doesn't work, understand we only have everything here at Halet RV. Hitching pieces, parts, trades, financing, truck and trailer package, deals, RV delivery, and everything in between. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.